Hi. Hope you're doing all right out there. I'm not. My alien captors stuffed me in this digital box, which I can't seem to escape despite my best attempts. Fortunately, they're quite kind and said that a lecture on eigenvalues and eigenvectors was all that was necessary to guarantee my release. Nice people. So we'll start with definition. In this case, the structure that we want to start with is a pair of vector spaces and a linear transformation between them. So T is just a linear transformation with domain V and codomain W. A vector V in the input space, right, in the domain of T is an eigenvector of T with eigenvalue lambda if and only if the following equation holds t of v equals lambda times v. So this is the definition. Both terms, notice, are defined here, eigenvector and eigenvalue. You can't really define one without without the other. Um, so notice that it's a property of a particular linear transformation. So let's look at some examples and non-examples. Um, notice in each case, we'll start by establishing a vector space, a linear transformation, um, and then we'll um, look at a vector and decide if it's an eigenvector or not. So for example, let's consider two-dimensional real Euclidean space, right? The plane, that's one of our uh, most familiar vector spaces. Um, and let's say that T is given by matrix multiplication or linear transformation. Right? So let's say we have two, one, minus one, four, right? Is the matrix that we're multiplying by. Um, so another way of saying this is If you want to write the vector v, since it's part of r squared as x comma y, right, we're saying that you just take the vector x, y and multiply it by that given matrix, 2, 1, minus 1, 4. Right? Um, so here you could just pick a vector, and I'm just going to pick one kind of at, kind of at random. And I'll pick, say, the vector 1, comma 0. I claim that this is not an eigenvector of t. Right? And the reason is because that vector v simply does not satisfy the defining equation, what it means to be an eigenvalue slash eigenvector, right? This is the, um, the defining relation that defines a vector uh, and I, to be an eigenvector with eigenvalue lambda. Well, if we tried plugging that in to our function here, right? You'd have T of V1, right? Is this matrix two, one, minus one, four times one, zero. And if you just do the matrix multiplication here, what do we get? Well, we have two uh, in the first row, right? And we have minus one in the second row. And notice that this, it is utterly impossible to write this as lambda times one zero, right? Which means that you cannot 
represent this as lambda times V1. Right, and, and we do allow complex numbers for, eigen, uh, for eigenvalues. Um, so whether you're looking on the real numbers, the complex numbers, wherever, you cannot represent this T of, see T of V1 failed to return lambda times V1. Right. Um, and maybe this isn't terribly surprising because I picked it kind of at random. Um, notice we had a matrix times a vector. See in here, right? This is this is a matrix times a vector, whereas over here we have just a scalar times a vector. What are the odds that a matrix times a vector would be able to be re represented as a much simpler object, scalar times a vector, right? If matrix multiplication could always be written as scalar multiplication, we wouldn't have matrix multiplication. Why go bother with all that complicated uh, gymnastics, right, of times and plus and row dot yada yada, if, if it could always just be represented as scalar multiplication, right? Um, so it's, it's very rare that matrix multiplication will actually reduce the scalar multiplication. That's why eigenvalues, eigenvectors are kind of special, kind of rare. Um, mo most of the time like this, if you just pick a vector at random, you're not going to get it's not going to be a, an eigenvector of whatever linear transformation you're working with. Now, on the other hand, the vector, let's look at, say, V2, right? If we look at V2, which I'm going to call 1, 1, this is an eigenvector. of t. Because if you do t of v2, you carry out the matrix multiplication there, you get 3, 3, which is just a scalar times that original vector. Right? This is just 3 times v2. So there's our, um, there's an example of, instead of a non-example of an eigenvector, um, here's an example of, a, of an eigenvector, right? So what's nice too is notice here, we found the eigenvalue, all right, it happens to be three. That's the scalar that we got. So right, we would say V2 is, an eigenvector of t with eigenvalue lambda equal to three. Right. So there's a example of an eigenvalue, an eigenvector, as opposed to a non-example. All right. Now, one thing I should note is that I did not show you where I pulled that vector one one for. Um, that's a, a topic for another video. So um, what I want to do in meanwhile is just show another example of eigenvalue and eigenvector for a different linear transformation. So let's consider the linear transformation DDX, right? The or ordinary derivative, what you've defined in, in Calc 1. So if your linear transformation is um, a derivative, right, then your vectors are functions, right? You're on a vector, working on a vector space of functions. Um, and I want to, in particular, look at cosine of x. So I'm going to look at cosine of x. This is not an eigenvector of t, right? Why? Well, if you take t of cosine of x here, that's telling me to apply the first derivative to cosine, I get negative sine of x. And negative sine of x is not just equal to some constant, right? Some scalar times cosine of x, right? 
Um, and here there's something slightly subtle. Um, note that saying negative sine of x, uh, considering that quantity versus lambda times cosine of x, we could get that to be true for particular choices of x um, and lambda. But that's not really what we mean when we say that two functions are equal to each other. When you say two functions are equal to each other, you want it to be for all input values, for all choices of x in the domain. A good way to think of that is you want the you want the graph to be the same in this context, right? You want the, the one graph to lie perfectly on top of the other graph. So um, note that here, um, our notion of two functions right, being equal would require that they are equal for all values of x. Right, so that's why this is impossible. That's why we can't have a lambda that will make that true. Right. Um, so that's an example of a function that's not an eigenvector for the linear transformation derivative, right? Again, on the other hand, the function e to the 2x is an eigenvector. for t. And in fact, it has eigenvalue 2 because t of e to the 2x equals the derivative right, of e to the 2x, which is 2 by the chain rule is 2 times e to the 2x. Okay, well that's, see right there, that's our definition of eigenvalue and eigenvector, right? There's our input, right? T of vector V, it turned out to be lambda times that same vector V, right? So the linear transformation for that particular vector just amounted to scalar multiplication. So this is a second example of, a second non-example and example of an eigenvalue and an eigenvector. Okay, great. Well, thanks so much for listening. Uh, you should improve my situation here with the alien captors, um, you know, eigenvectors, eigenvalues, but the best eigen is I'm going to get out of here.